Good morning, church. Wherever you are gathered this morning, welcome to this service of worship for Oakland United Methodist Church. I'm Pastor Carolyn, and we are glad that you are worshiping with us this morning. Um, not too many announcements this morning. The um, women's Bible, uh, women's book study, um, A Path Appears, has been moved to this Wednesday. Um, we'll be on chapter two um, for that. So if you are interested in joining that, please just contact the church and we will make sure that you get an invitation. Um, stay tuned, church members, for announcements about worship. Um, things are changing um, rapidly um, and, um, and guidelines from the bishop are changing. So um, stay tuned for more information, hopefully early this week. We also apologize um, that we haven't been able to get the emails out um, because we've been having some trouble with our email account. So uh, hopefully we'll get that straightened out early this week um, and we'll be able to, um, to get out the newsletter and some and other information that people need. But otherwise, just watch our Facebook page and um, we will communicate through that as well. As we enter into this time of worship, I would invite you simply to take a deep breath. Just breathe in and breathe out. And as you let it out, I would invite you to just sit down, set down any worries or fears or burdens that you might be carrying, at least for this time of worship, so that you can focus truly on connecting with God. At the end of the worship time, if you want to pick those things up again and carry them, you certainly can, but please know that if you are willing to give them to God, God is willing to carry them for you. This is Pentecost Sunday, so our first scripture reading is from Acts 2, verses 1 through 21, the coming of the Holy Spirit. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where the disciples were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at the sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism. Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, then I will pour my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist, the sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is God's word. And for it, we are thankful. 
Please pray with me. Holy God, like a rushing wind, your spirit moved upon the first disciples on the day of Pentecost. And like a purifying fire, your spirit burned within their hearts and minds, stirring them to share the message of Jesus Christ with the world. Send your spirit upon your people in this time and place. Stir up our courage and awaken us to be your witnesses. Fire up our compassion, enlarge our witness, and stretch our hospitality. Holy God, breath of joy, renew our spirits, touch our hearts, and bring us peace. Amen. And our song is, O Spirit of the Living God, in the United Methodist Hymnal number 539. Children, wherever you are and whatever your age, just want to welcome you again to this service of worship. This is Pentecost Sunday, and Pentecost Sunday is a very special day in the life of the church. A lot of uh, many people consider it to be the birthday of the church because this is the time when the Holy Spirit, which was God's very special gift to the disciples, came down on the disciples and gave them the power to share the good news of Jesus Christ throughout all the world. Now, the Holy Spirit is something that's kind of hard to understand sometimes, but basically it is kind of like a battery for the church, but it's a battery that never runs out. Can you imagine that? It never runs out. It's the power that God gives to the church to do the things that we do, which is to share the love of Jesus Christ in our words and our actions. So when you think about the things that you do when you follow Jesus Christ, when you love other people, when you care for your family, when you share Jesus with other people, all of that is made possible because God has given us the gift of the Holy Spirit, and that is the power that we need to be able to be the followers of Jesus Christ in the world by what we say and what we do. 
So let's pray. We thank you, God, for the power that you have given us through your Holy Spirit. We thank you that this power gives us the ability to share your love in our words and our deeds. And we know that this power will never run out. Amen. Our second reading this morning is from Ezekiel 37, verses 1 through 14. The prophet Ezekiel's vision of the valley of dry bones. The hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out by the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them, and there were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, mortal, can these bones live? And I answered, O oh, Lord God, you know. And then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter, the, enter you and you shall live. I will lay sinews on you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded and as I prophesied suddenly there was a noise, a rattling and the bones came together bone to its bone. I looked and there were sinews on them and flesh had come upon them and skin had covered them but there was no breath in them. Then God said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy mortal and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. And so I prophesied as the Lord had commanded me and breath came into them and they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then God said to me, mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. And I will bring you back to the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O my people. I will put my spirit within you and you shall live and I will place you on your own soil and then you shall know that I the Lord have spoken and will act says the Lord. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, we give you thanks for this time of worship. We give you thanks for the coming of your spirit, which empowers us to be your disciples throughout the world. We pray this morning that your spirit will stir once again within us, that as we go about our daily lives, your spirit would empower us to share your love in word and deed, wherever we are. Amen. Forensic anthropology is the scientific study of human skeletal remains. It's a well-established discipline within the forensic field. Forensic anthropologists are called upon to investigate remains and help identify individuals from bones when other physical characteristics that could be used to identify a body no longer exist. Through examining skeletal remains, forensic anthropologists can provide physical characteristics of the person, such as sex, approximate age, height, and ethnicity. A forensic anthropologist might, might assist in the investigation of any event from a single homicide case 
to mass death scenarios created by terrorist activities such as the World Trade Center on 9-11, mass transit crashes of planes, buses, and trains, and natural disasters such as wildfires, hurricanes, and tsunamis. When there's nothing left of victims except bones or bone fragments, investigators will call for help from forensic anthropologists. One wonders what a forensic anthropologist would have made of Ezekiel's valley filled with dry bones. Our reading from Ezekiel finds the prophet Ezekiel in exile in the city of Babylon more than 500 years before the birth of Christ. While in captivity, the prophet sees seven visions, which include messages of judgment on Israel, messages of judgment on the other nations of the world, and promises of future blessings for the people of Israel. Understanding the context of this passage will help us here. Ezekiel was born into the priesthood and became both a prophet and a priest. His ministry began around 1,500 years after the time of Abraham, just before the conquest of Judah in 587 B.C. A few years after he began his prophetic ministry, Jerusalem was taken by the Babylonian king Nebuchadnezzar. The people of Judah have seen their city plundered, and the temple, the seat of both their religious faith and their government, destroyed. Their leaders have been maimed and put in chains, their soldiers put to the sword, and their young men and women either killed or dragged off into exile in Babylon, where they've been told to thrive or die in a land that is not their own. So the people to whom Ezekiel is addressing this vision are suffering a death of the spirit, a living death in exile in a foreign land, afraid that God has abandoned them. When the prophet Ezekiel tries to preach words of encouragement to them, they reply, our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. There is no life in us and there is no way to put life back into us. Ezekiel responds by describing a vision that God has given him. The prophet reports that the hand of the, and the spirit of God picked him up and set him down in the middle of a valley, and it was full of bones. He led me all around, and there were very many bones lying in the valley, and they were very dry. After God led Ezekiel all around the valley, it's clear to Ezekiel that there's absolutely no life there, just bones piles and piles of dry, lifeless bones. God says to Ezekiel, mortal, can these bones live? Ezekiel's response, O Lord God, you know, is rather vague. We really don't know what his vocal inflection was, or we might be able to determine whether he spoke with hesitation. O Lord God, you know? With resignation, perhaps, oh, Lord God, you know. Or with conviction, oh, Lord God, you know. But I tend to think that Ezekiel spoke with confidence, with conviction. Because his narrative to this point, Ezekiel has never suggested anything lies beyond the Lord's power and control. In this place of death, Ezekiel knows that only God can bring renewed life. The dead won't start, stand up and start dancing around by themselves, but Ezekiel is willing to trust that the word of God can make it so. So God commands Ezekiel to speak to these dry, dead bones. And when he does, suddenly they begin rattling back together. Tendons and flesh cover them. Corpses begin to look alive. They stand up, and there's a vast multitude. But the bodies have no life, no breath. And so God tells Ezekiel to prophesy again. Prophesy to the breath, and tell it to come from the four corners of the earth and enter into these bones. Mere physical renewal is not enough. The final step in the transformation of the people is literally the inspiring of the spirit, the breath or wind of God, 
into the dried up bones of his people, which brings them fully to life. It's an awesome and inspiring vision, and God is quick to interpret the vision for us, saying to Ezekiel, Mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. But through Ezekiel's vision, God lets the people know that they are not forgotten and that God's promises to open their graves and bring them back to their homeland will come true. I will put my spirit within you and you shall live, promises the Lord, and I will place you on your own soil. And then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. The key to this new life is God's spirit, God's awesome life-giving power that can bring hope to the hopeless and life to the most disconnected and desiccated of bones. Just as God's spirit breathed new life into the dry bones of Ezekiel's vision, so it breathed new life into the first disciples. Today is Pentecost Sunday the day that God sent the Holy Spirit into a room full of those first followers of Jesus Christ in Jerusalem. The book of Acts tells us that divided tongues as of fire appeared among them and a tongue rested on each of them and all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. That day, hundreds were converted by the power of the Spirit speaking through the disciples, which enabled each person listening to hear the words in their own language. This is the point at which the Jesus movement stops being a collection of men and women who follow Jesus around and begins to be the church, something that reaches beyond the religious and cultural origins to eventually become an international movement that embraces the whole world. The explosive growth of the early Christian movement was directly fueled by the power of the Holy Spirit working through those first disciples. At the center of the transformation of the lifeless bones in Ezekiel's vision and of the Jesus disciples on Pentecost is the Holy Spirit, a current of divine power that comes directly from God. Through the Spirit, God brought new life and new energy to those first disciples. Through the Spirit, God promised new life for Ezekiel and for the people of Judah, even though they felt like dried up, desiccated bones. And through the Spirit, God can bring new life to us as well. When we feel our bones are dried up and our hope is lost, God's word and God's breath, God's wind, God's spirit can give us new life as individuals and as communities. We can be assured of God's presence and power in the midst of the most difficult circumstances because God is as near to us as our own breath. At the heart of the passage from Ezekiel is the message, God is able. I know that when I feel lost, God is able to find me. When I feel crushed by fear or grief, God is able to lift my burden. When the future seems uncertain, God is able to guide me. When I feel overwhelmed by life's challenges, God is able to strengthen me. When I'm feeling attacked, God is able to deliver me. When I'm feeling disconnected, dried up, discouraged, God is able to reconnect, refresh, and renew my spirit. When, as individuals or as a congregation, we feel our bones are dried up and our hope is lost, and we are completely cut off from God or from each other, at that precise moment, the challenge is for us to turn to God and ask him to fill us with his spirit. Because God's wind, spirit, breath 
can revive us. And when our dry bones begin to rattle and join together, we discover together that hope is stronger than despair. Death is never the last word. Fear can give way to peace, and sadness can give way to joy. Mortal, can these bones live? Through your spirit, yes, Lord, most definitely, yes. Amen. And our next song is Spirit Song, which is in the United Methodist Hymnal number 347. And our affirmation of faith this morning comes from number 883 in the United Methodist Hymnal, the affirmation of faith of the United Church of Canada. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the word made flesh, to reconcile and make new who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. And we come now to this time of the service when we share our joys and our concerns. Let us pray. Loving and gracious God, we give you thanks for this opportunity we have to lift up our prayers to you. 
Let us unite our hearts and minds in prayer for our world, saying, Almighty God, hear our prayer. For the church throughout the world, inspire your children for prophetic witness to your truth and give clarity of vision to acknowledge your saving power for all people. For nations of the world and their leaders, guide them with your wisdom and give them courage in their decision-making. Almighty God, hear our prayer. For planet Earth, our home, by your spirit, renew the earth. Make us good stewards of its resources and teach us to enjoy its abundance. Almighty God, hear our prayer. For those in need of healing, especially those that we name before you now. Send your healing spirit upon, upon those who are sick in body or mind. Restore them to health and bring peace to minds and spirits troubled by fear or grief or doubt. Almighty God, hear our prayer. For our neighbors and members of our community, teach us to be good neighbors, to live in peace with one another, and in, the friendship, in, in friendship share the joys and burdens of our daily lives. Almighty God, hear our prayer. For those whose lives are broken or ended by the sin of racism, especially at this time, George Floyd, whose breath was stolen from him, and for his family as they mourn. Pray that God's Holy Spirit will give us in our time the gifts of understanding, respect, and peace among the peoples of our neighborhoods and our nations in all their wonderful diversity. Help us to know that each one is your beloved child. Almighty God, hear our prayer. In your mercy, Almighty God, receive our prayers and according to your wisdom, provide all that we need through Jesus Christ and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And let us pray in Jesus' name as he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. We have opened our hands to God and they have been filled with good things. In gratitude for all God's gifts to us, let us offer our gifts of money, time, and talents to God. And we give thanks for all the gifts that have been received in the past week and for all of those that will be received in the week to come. If you wish to make a donation to the ministry and work of Oakland United Methodist Church, you can send a donation to 200 North Main, Box 4, Oakland, Iowa, 51560. Let us pray this prayer of dedication for the gifts that have been received this week. Almighty God, you have filled our lives with many good things. Receive the gifts of gratitude that we offer. Use them and use us to do your work as we dedicate our lives in love to serve you by serving others through Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the power of the Holy Spirit, let us go to fulfill our calling to live as the people of God, the body of Christ. 
Go into this week empowered by the Holy Spirit to live, serve, love, and care as faithful followers of Jesus Christ. Share the gospel in word and action, for such is your commission. And may the fire of God's spirit burn brightly upon you and within you, now and always. Amen. And our closing song is God of Grace and God of Glory, number 577 in the United Methodist Hymnal.